ability that humans have. In other words, no more could even a small collection of people run the shuttle than they could jump up in the air several thousand feet in the atmosphere. All right, there is a sense, though, that many of us have who, who really don't understand how computers work or what they do for us or to us, uh, that we are becoming controlled by the computers. Any danger of that happening? Well, as you know, the product we manufacture, many people see it for the first time and they don't think it's a computer. It's about 12 pounds. You can throw it out the window if the relationship isn't going so well. And I think if you look at sort of the process of uh, the technological revolution that we're all in, it's a process of taking very centralized things and making them very democratic, if you will, very individualized, making them affordable by, in by individuals for a small collection of tasks, if you will, sort of from the passenger train to the Volkswagen. All right, we heard you talking on tape a moment ago about the bicycle of the 21st century. Right. What were you talking about? Well, actually, I read a survey in Scientific American in the early 70s. And what this survey had done was it measured the efficiency of locomotion for various species of things on the planet, birds, fish, dogs, and it ranked them. And uh, it turned out that the condor won. The con condor took the least amount of energy to get from point A to point B. And man sort of came in with a rather unimpressive showing about a third of the way down the list. But someone at uh, that magazine had the insight to test the efficiency of man riding a bicycle. And man riding a bicycle was twice as good as the condor, all the way off the end of the list. And it really illustrated man's ability as a tool maker to fashion a tool to amplify an inherent ability that he has. And that's really exactly what we feel we're doing. We're really sort of blazing the trails for the 21st century bicycle, but to amplify a slightly different inherent uh, ability that man has, the ability of a certain part of intelligence. Right now we're at the mechanical part of intelligence, where one of these devices can free a person from many of the drudgeries of life and allow really humans to do what they do best, which is to work on the conceptual level, to work on the creative level. All right, David Burnham, you have some concerns about computers, and I guess uh, in part they have to do with the invasion of privacy, and they do invade our privacy, do they not? They certainly do, and we have many examples from our history. Mr. Jobs said that the computer amplified the ability of man. That's true, but man, history tells us, has done good things and he's also done bad things. The, the Census Bureau, for example, used computerized punch cards to help locate the Japanese Americans in 1941 when they were all, so many of them were arrested on the West Coast. Uh, I, I keep borrowing this phrase from the NRA, you know, guns don't kill people, people kill people. Computers don't do that to people. People using computers do that. Isn't a computer in and of itself a, a, a neutral tool that can be used for good or, a, or evil? It is, and men use guns to kill people, and men use guns to hunt animals. The question is, is our society alert enough to understand the power of the computer and to turn it toward the good things, or are there people and occasions when we will use this tool for a bad purpose? Uh, Steve Jobs, I, I, I realize this is your baby and you've made a, you've made a career out of it, but uh, you're also something of a philosopher. Do you see the, the inherent possibility of, of bad coming out of all of this? Well, I think uh, one of the things you really have to look at is you have to go watch some kids using these things. Uh, as an example, 97% of the high school students who graduate from Minnesota have hands-on experience with these personal computers, learning how to use them. We call this computer literacy. They're actually happening in, you know, in the elementary schools now. And you go watch kids interact with these computers. And what you find is far from something quite harmful. Uh, in effect, what you, what you see is an instantaneous reflection of a part of themselves, uh, the creative part of themselves being expressed. And it's just very, very difficult to see these kids using this tool and realizing that they're going to have these tools available for the rest of their lives to portray that as something very harmful. It's, uh, it's actually something quite democratic. All right, but I mean, the government, and, and I think Mr. Burnham was leading us in this direction, the, the, the government has the capacity by using computers to get all kinds of information on us that we're really not even aware that they have. Isn't that dangerous? Well, I think the best protection against something like that is a very literate public, and in this case, computer literate. And I think you're actually seeing that happen right now. Uh, in the personal computer area, again, computers that people can afford themselves, uh, we've already reached approximately one in every thousand households in the United States. And I think over the next five or six years, that figure will be one in ten. Ultimately, it will be one in one. And uh, I think the feeling of computer literacy among the populace is the thing that 
for me at least, gives me the most comfort that that centralized intelligence will have the least effect on our lives without us knowing it. Mr. Burnham, are you comforted by that thought that somehow we will all have the capacity to defend ourselves against computers by owning and being able to control computers? Well, I wonder whether the individual citizen alone is any match, say, for the United States Army when a few years ago it began surveillance programs of hundreds of thousands of people who were lawfully opposed, uh, voicing their opposition to the war in Vietnam. I wonder whether the individual citizen can control the army or whether the individual citizen can control the Census Bureau if it decides to break the rules and make information available which the citizen has given to it. All right, but on balance, are you for them or against them? I think there's a tremendous danger that the public is not aware of enough at this moment. I think if we are aware that perhaps we can use them for the good things that Mr. Jobs sees in them. All right, computer literacy, you're both in favor of that, and I thank you both very much for being with us.